host, Alex Gray, and welcome to the International Classroom Podcast, where we explore and celebrate the diversity and innovation of education from around the world. In each episode, we bring you insights and discussions from experts and educators who share their invaluable experiences, the challenges that they've faced, and the solutions they've championed. Now, whether you're an educator, a student, or simply someone with a passion for lifelong learning, I invite you to join us on this journey. Today, I have a very special guest with me. He's a science teacher, a rapper, and a viral sensation. He is none other than Matt Green, the rapping science teacher. Matt has been making waves on social media with his catchy and informative science raps. He covers topics from GCSE science, such as cell structure, atomic structure, electrolysis, and more, using popular beats from artists like Drake, Stormzy, and Dave. His videos have been viewed over 20 million times on TikTok, and he's also appeared on BBC One Extra and The Voice UK. Now, before we get on to the episode, the International Classroom will soon be going international. On March the 2nd, I'm going to be in Bucharest, Romania to interview and podcast from the AI education event taking place at the Cambridge School of Bucharest. It's a cheap flight over for what promises to be an amazing day of professional learning. If you're interested and you want to know more, I've put the link in the description below. Now, on to the episode. Um, okay. So, Matt, thank you ever so much for joining me on the International Classroom Podcast. Um, I know thank you're you obviously guys. a very busy man. And uh, I was telling, telling my daughter that obviously I've got you coming on today and she's like, ah, I've seen him on TikTok. And I was like, yeah. Um, <laughs> but before we even get to that point, before we get to that point, let's, let's rewind a little bit and, and just unpack your journey um, because we're going to get to how, how we got to where we are today. But tell us a little bit about in terms of where you started off in education. So educationally, if I take it back to, to undergrad, I did a Bachelor of Science at uh, Kent University, back in 2006 through to 2009. And then after that, I graduated and got my master's degree from Imperial College. That was 2010. Um, Faffed around in a few jobs here and there. And then in 2012, I went into teaching. That's where I got my degree in teaching from from Middlesex, 2012. Okay. And you are, as we know, but you are a science teacher. As we know, all the best teachers are science teachers, aren't they? 100%, that's it. (laughs) 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 <laughs> <laughs> so you get into teaching how what was your first experience like in terms of those first few years in teaching how did that go for you oh gosh first experience in the classroom um i really enjoyed it My, when i first came to the school as, a, as, a, as essentially a, a glorified ta um and i was working with small groups of students before i took on larger classes um a few months after when i got into my proper qualification and yeah, I really enjoyed explaining to students. I was with A-level chemists at the time um, and just unpicking things, helping them with things they didn't get, helping them understand and seeing the sort of the clogs ticking in their brain in that moment of, 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 of confidence building. Um, and yeah, I've, I enjoyed it from the get-go. And then I became a formal teacher. I was quite strict in my early years. And uh, but yeah, it was a, it's, it's great in the classroom. When you've got a group of 30 students and and you're able to, to guide them through something that they usually would either find boring or didn't quite get before. And you're able to get that light bulb moment. Um, yes, yeah, beautiful yeah. thing. Yeah, completely agree. I, uh, when that penny drops for the kids, it's, uh, it is great. I, I, I think everyone out there can resonate with that one. Um, so go forward a little bit. Um, you're not out of education, are you? No. But no. you're not necessarily, oh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you're not necessarily doing full-time teaching. Um, because obviously you've got a different gig. You like what I did there in terms of gig. You know, <laughs> <about that>. um, <laughs> but we're curious. So like most people are going to watch in this are going to know you as the rapping science teacher uh, and that for the last kind of six months. And we'll get to that part in a bit. But how did you kind of go from just teaching science then? Uh, we're talking about A-level science to kind of discovering then, look, I've got a talent and a passion for rapping. So the rapping uh, passion came probably when I was in my my early years. So I, obviously I loved rap music from when I was a kid. And then I, I started rapping when I was probably around 16, 17 years old. Um, but I never really took it anywhere because I went to uni and there, just, there wasn't time for it. I didn't see it becoming a thing. But I probably got okay to an okay standard. And then when I dabbled in social media for the first time about five, six years ago, I was doing simple posts for kids to help them understand things. And then one day I thought, 
how can I raise this a level? Um, and the idea of, of singing or making songs came to me. Um, but I think I was a bit, a bit scared to do it to start with. So I sat on it for about a year. And then I think 2020, September, I bit the bullet, went all in and, and dropped it. So it was, it was in there for years, but you know, eventually it all came together, the teaching, the science, the education and the rap. And then, yeah, and that's where it was born. Yeah, and again, for those of the watchers, the viewers out there, listeners who have not, go and check it out. So Matt, obviously multiple different social media channels, but predominantly TikTok, isn't it, that you, in terms of, I think I had a quick check before we came on, something like you're over 500,000 listeners, 9.3 million likes, like, and they're just rap, you know, about element science components. It's not just one, it's, it's physics, it's chemistry, it's biology. So all geared towards GCSE? GCSE, that's it. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Um, what's been what's been the feedback then on that? What's what's kind of the the impact that's had? So, the biggest thing is, I guess, students. The messages I get um, either directly in comments or, or DMs, and also indirectly. So sometimes parents I speak to say, "Oh my god, my, my, my son or daughter, they they follow you." And last year they were getting like grade fours. Now they're getting grade fives and grade sixes. And they said it's down to watching your raps. Um, and then I get it obviously from, from the horses' mouths themselves. I get the messages saying, I was getting grade twos and threes in science last term. I found your videos and now I'm, I'm passing with fives and I'm able to go into the higher the higher paper. Um, and I love the subject now. And I used to find it boring before. Thank you so much. And I've got those in the thousands. And um, and yeah, they, they, every time I get those, they, they, they mean a lot to me. And uh, it, yeah, it keeps me going. It keeps me going. I love it. Yeah. So just let's just go through the process of it then in terms of the raps themselves, uh, the recording and the, the structuring, uh, you know, take us through that process. You find a topic you want to do, like, how do you start? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll try and say this in, in the most straightforward, non-boring way possible, but <laughs> in a nutshell, <laughs> there are several ways I approach it. So um, in the early days, it was led by the beat. So I'd hear a beat that was just what I call, I call a cold blooded beat, a beat that just, I just love. And I, I play it. And then sometimes a subject will come to me based on the, the pace, just the feeling it gives the subject will come to me. Um, and then I'll write based on that. So that's, that's method one. The other method, which I used probably last year in the other ways, I have a, a, a set list of topics I've got to go through to eventually complete the whole syllabus. So it might be that I've got to do alloys this week. And the week after that, I've got to do stem cells. And then I have what I call my beat list. So beats that I've identified as, as either I love and a trending or a trending and I happen to like. And I've got a list of those and I tick them off week by week. I go to the studio and I record three at a time. Um, but yeah, I, te- I tend to think the ones that I do best are when I hear a beat and it a topic comes to me. So for example, one of the early ones that did more than go viral, it got loads of um, duets so not only did did it get millions of views, but I woke up one morning and hundreds of people were using that song and making videos back to it. And that song was um, Storm was in Ed Sheeran, um, Own It. So because the, the 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 rhythm of that song was Own It, da, 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 Own It, I thought, what 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 rhymes of Own It that is scientific? And I was driving a car one day, and mitosis has a similar sound to it. So I, I crafted a song that way. Um, and that worked very well. There's a Jack Harlow song. I did the same thing recently. I think it's got about 4 million, 4 million views recently. And it was um, Loving On Me. So I based it on the fact that an enzyme is trying to attract the substrate and a substrate is trying to go to an enzyme. And that went viral for that reason. So I think when, when, I'm, when I craft them that way, they tend to do better. Yeah, and it relate. We talk a lot about resonating with students, don't we? And I was having a conversation recently about like language and and obviously this generation of students and the languages they have, like because they're playing games so often. In terms of everything's like abbreviated. Like uh, in real life, would be like R, you know, I R L or be right back is like B R B, like this short time. Like we have this, but if you can find a hook, isn't it? Like the beat that they can resonate with and go, ah, I've heard that, I've heard, and it's like, and they can go to it. It's like it hooks them in, doesn't it? And it helps them learn. And, and speaking of that, like. Oh, you said it, a huge impact uh, in, in terms of students, but what do you think? Why do you think that is? Why do you think that this form of presenting information has uh, such a huge impact on their ability to understand something? I think it's a, a twofold thing. So 
if I wasn't rapping and it was just quick, succinct information delivered in 30 seconds, I still think they'd do pretty well. It, it just, they'd be harder to remember. And they might be less interesting from the get-go. So if a 15-year-old me was watching a video on, on history, for example, I, I hated history at school and I was, I was terrible at it. So if someone was just presenting the history facts for my exam in 30 seconds rather than an hour, as long as they were interesting, that would probably pull me in. But if it was on my favorite artist songs, and everything happened to rhyme, well, those rhymes, the lyrics are easier to remember than just free-flowing words. So if they're watching a video and they think 30 seconds and it rhythmically, they want to keep listening to it, it loops back to the beginning again, and then they find themselves just just remem remembering words. So they go to the exams and like, da, 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 da. ah, got it, and I can write it down. Yeah. And do you do you find it easy to, to write the rap? Because, I mean, some of these science words are not the necessarily easiest things to kind of incorporate into to rhythm and flow, is it? <laughs> no, but there's there's always a way. At the beginning, it was daunting, but I feel like um, my brain has adapted to it now. Even though it's complicated to words, they can be cut down. I think I was, um, what was the song I was doing today? I think I was writing a song to a Kanye West song called Runaway. Um, and even though that was it, I, was writing, I had a song that I wrote literally two days ago. Um that's going out today. I've almost it's on sound longitudinal. So longitudinal is a lot of syllables, but sometimes you can break it down. So longitudinal, and then it can. It's if you try to rush it, it, it won't work. So you just break it down into chunks, and it usually follows. And then kids like it because they they just think this big impossible word. They go, oh, it's actually just these four syllables very clearly said. Amazing. Now, as a content creator. I, you've seen a lot of people I've seen a lot of people these days sort of coming off YouTube it's like there's too much pressure there's you know the demands of it are high how do you find that then do you find that there is a high demand or an expectation maybe that you self-impose on yourself to to keep putting out content or is it something that you just find quite easy at this moment in time well that's a good question I've, I've heard of this thing that you're saying like creative fatigue or or the, the pressure that creators do put on themselves I find myself in a very, um, what I call luxury. I don't know if I'd call it luxury because the wraps usually take about 15 hours to make. But I have a curriculum list um, and I love my subject and I love teaching. So the 15 hours I spend making these um, are enjoyable for me. So I enjoy making them um, and I like making them. And because the curriculum is so long, I've definitely got about a year in front of me, possibly more of topics that I'm still yet to go through. And then what I'm finding, especially the last six months, is some of those early topics I did, they're so ropey, I'm going back to revisit topics I did in my early years of rapping. So it might be that what I thought might be a year off me finishing is probably another two years because I'm going to continually revisit the earlier raps and do them better. Yeah. So I think I've definitely got this in the tank till about 26, 2026. Yeah, I like that. I like that thought, a uh, well thought out planned uh, yeah. part of it. My wife hates that. My wife hates that about me, just organized yeah. and planned and prepared. So te it's just a teacher. It's just a teacher in me. Yeah. I like being organized. I like to know what I've got to do and all that. Um, but we kind of mentioned earlier, they say, well, you've not fully stepped away from education. We say we've got this rapping part, but you're also tutoring as well, aren't you? So yeah, how's that go? How do you find the time? How's that work out? Well, fortunately, we've got a team. So I'm supported by my wife. Um, so my wife is is great. Probably a better organizer than me. Um, so I'm lucky I've, I've, I've got her here with me. So she helps me with the running of the company. Um, and we've got one of our admin staff in here as well that you saw a, a little while ago. And we've got 90 tutors with us. So in the early days, I used to tutor myself. Um, but I had to step out of that completely in July. Uh, it's always it's been dwindling for years as the tutor numbers have been raising and the client number has been raising. You know, I think 2019, I probably saw 24 clients a week myself. Two years ago, 12 clients a week. Last year, six. And this was the last year. Yeah, July 22, July 23 was the last year I did it because, you know, I'm very grateful and very lucky with the amazing teacher team that we have. And we've got quite a few senior teachers, tutor, tutors with us that, do behind the scenes things. So it's not just me doing everything now. So there's, there's, there's a lot of uh, high quality, very qualified individuals that are behind the whole team. Yeah. And it's tutoring is a weird one. Like, for, so from an international perspective, 
lots of parents you know in terms of high achieving want sons daughters to 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 really maximize and push on and so we'll spend a lot of money on teachers to tutor to ensure this happens and and but in the uk or again across europe internationally from that side of it it's never something that was necessarily at the forefront, even of my knowledge bank. It was just like, right, teaching, uh, whereas it seems now that actually tutoring and, and what you're offering has become a lot more mainstream. Would, would you yes. say that's the case? Oh, 100%. When I was in school, I, I never had a tutor myself, and I don't remember knowing anyone. Well, I knew a few people that had a tutor, but it wasn't like a, like a popular thing. Um, whereas since I've been on the other side and been a teacher myself, I feel like it's definitely every other student. It's like years ago, I think it's 10 years ago, they said it was one in three. I'm, I'm damn yeah. sure that it's a lot higher than that. Now. One in two or probably two in three now, I would say. Why do you think that is then? I think for, for my subject or for, for our subject, for, for science and maths, there's definitely a teacher shortage for those. So I think for subjects like English and the humanities, you get loads of brilliant people that go into the classroom and students are able to come out with, you know, their basic passes or their good passes. That definitely isn't the case for science. So, you know, you've got your daughter that you mentioned, Alex. I've got my kids. They're, they're younger than yours, I think. Um, they're not at secondary school yet. But by the time they do get there, I'm pretty sure they'll be fine for English. But for the other subjects, if they're lower, I'm going to try and bring in some help to, to get them higher. Um, so for subjects like science and maths, I think that's why that's happening. Yeah. Yeah, I'm starting to see, and even now, like, uh, like Bet, you're going to be at Bet, aren't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be there on Wednesday. Yeah, and and so, but that's all of, again, like the tutoring side of it, the wrapping side of it, all coming together. It's it's actually now like more. I don't know whether it was frowned upon. I don't know if that's the right word for it from certain educators. I would, looked down say, upon. I, I would take that exact phrase. I think Phil, that's exactly how it was years and years ago. Um, frowned upon. But it's not the but now not the case is it not at all no. and, and i think this is probably a good thing i think that the frown upon thing would be you know if we go back 20 years ago i mean you you know exactly the same when we've got our kids the same age and uh, and you're talking about your daughter doing well in english or science or maths and i'm thinking i've got a tutor i'm thinking oh god i don't want to admit my kids are a bit behind alex so i'm going to keep that to myself um whereas now that isn't the thing i'm like oh my kids are behind no. and oh, i've got a tutor for them and you might be like well good on you yeah. Whereas before, I think it was sort yeah. of seen as like your kids are behind, so you know you need to support them, which isn't great. Yeah, or it was seen as very much of an elitist thing, I think, in terms that, of if you could that, afford to pay for it. That too. Um, that too. Yeah. So amazing. I mean, doing amazing things in terms of being able to offer value to students, and then obviously business wise, you're a man that wears many hats, and successfully so. Um, but how do you how do you how do you cope with that? Because I imagine now, like I've seen you, I'm in Dubai. I've seen you on the Voice in the UK. Uh, I've seen you doing stuff like through New Year's, you know, through crowds of people. I imagine for you, maybe more with students than necessary parents. But you imagine you're going to places and, and you're getting recognised a little bit, and people might go, "I know you. I've seen you." Uh, type of thing. I'm not saying you're, you know, I need my own security just yet, but. Um, <laughs> Um, how does that, it's one of those things first of all it's like how does that feel and then how do you cope with that I, I feel I feel that I'm quite blessed with this I, I feel like I'm not recognised really by anyone maybe that's because I don't go out very much and I say anyone loosely I mean when I go to the gym there's usually students there and usually maybe once every other time someone will be like I, I use you for GCSE and they'll come and shake my hand um, I had a student once I think about a year ago that actually came off the bus and I was just like, I used you last year, I've got to shake your hand. So that happens with the students. So I feel like there's a very small, specific pocket of, 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 <laughs> of, of, of people that know who I am. And I like it that way. So I can walk around my local high street, I can go anywhere, and I'm just a faceless nobody, which is, is how I like to keep it. And then students know who I am, and, and that's it. I don't think I could quite deal with sort of any sort of like D or C level celebrity and, and be recognized where I go. I think, I think I'd find that quite a bit of a struggle to be honest. Oh, maybe. So obviously we talk about the voice. How the did voice. that come about? How did, how did you end up on there? They, um, they called me in, in about June, July 22. 
June and July 2022. Um, I think after I'd gone viral on, on TikTok, I hadn't quite got there on Instagram, but I'd gone viral on TikTok. And they asked me if I'd be interested. And uh, I said, I'd have to think about it. So we came home, spoke to my wife about it. And we looked at some of the horror stories from the old X Factor days. Yeah. Where they used to just march any old person that said their mum, their mum had told them they were great, and then they, they, they built their lungs out, <laughs> and everyone's like, "Why? Why do you think you were good?" Um, and uh, and I thought, let me do my research on the voice, and it, it seems that they don't do that anymore, which I confirm is the case because um, for ITV and especially the voice team, I mean, they look after everyone there like like superbly. They make everyone feel like you're a million dollars. So I've got I've got to take my hat off to them. Um, but yeah, when they called me, done the research, I thought, let's go for it. Um, yeah, and that, that was essentially it. They, they, they called and I made a decision and I went for it. Um, and the aim was to sort of spread awareness of what I was doing for the help on increasing the channel and then and, and raising raising awareness to more students that didn't necessarily know what I did, which has worked because there's so many students now I see on TikTok that write a comment and they'll be like, ah, I saw you in the voice rather than yeah. they were a follower and they saw me in the voice, they saw me in the voice. Now they've become a follower and they're using it to support for GCSE Science, which was the aim. It's, 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 it's paid off. Now, I want to just take 30 seconds of your time to talk about our sponsor, Deep Professional, and the courses they have for educators. Now, the teachers I've spoken with, they want to use ChatGPT, but their schools aren't offering training and they don't know where to start. And that leaves them often feeling completely overwhelmed. As educators, we need a clear, straightforward guide through this landscape. And that's why Deep developed Getting Started with ChatGPT for Educators. It's a comprehensive course designed specifically for educators like you seeking real understanding step by step. Imagine turning the confusion around AI into clarity and transforming that fear into creative teaching methodologies. And with this course, you'll learn how to integrate AI into your curriculum, engage students in innovative ways, and utilize ChatGPT to enhance learning experiences. So, if you're ready to upgrade your teaching methods and empower your students with AI knowledge, join me on this journey. You can enroll today at coursesdeepprofessional.com. The link is in the description and you can get started with teaching AI. Back to the episode. Fantastic. In terms of then, smart move uh, and, and again, opening more students' eyes to obviously the work that's out there, then uh, yeah, it was great. And I mean, luckily, you didn't get booted out first round either, did you? I know, I know that that, I, that was the thing. I had to make a decision. I was like, can I go on there and get booed at first round and be happy with it? And you know, the way I saw it is like, an opportunity is an opportunity, and I can quite happily go there and have no ch- chair turn and be okay with that. So things like X Factor. If I had to go up there, not get ch- picked, and then get berated, I don't think I would have gone to that. But to just not get a chair turn, like, that was the worst. So I thought, let's go for it. So when I got two turns, I was like, hey, <laughs> result. So but then, but then, let's just go through it. Happened. Sorry, I was going to say. But then when that happened, <laughs> I was like, maybe I could make the next round. And I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, maybe I could do, I could go all the way. I could do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so like there's people out there maybe like that haven't or don't know about the British version of it. So in terms of the chairs, who did you have turn for you? Will I am and Anne-Marie. Okay. So I imagine I'm going to go no brainer. You went Will I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. Had to be. That was, that was that? The one they kept. That, oh, that was, yeah. That, sometimes I look back at the clip and I feel, wow, that was, that was one hell of a moment. Um, and it's funny because I, I was, my emotion was stifled at the time because I'd prepared. And so I can't pretend this is my own idea here. My wife had helped prepare me for a, a, a sudden chair turn so I wouldn't be put off. Yeah. Because when I practiced at home, I could do it with my eyes closed. But the second my wife turned, turned the chair, I forgot my words straight away. So I trained based on no one turning and based on people turning randomly suddenly at any point through the song. And I thought, I can't skip a beat. So when the chair turned, I just was just in mode, just continue. It was only when it stopped, I was like, oh man, this actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And Riley, and for, congratulations, by the way. That was amazing. It's Thank even you. if, even, but just to get that, I like, that's one of those things where you can go when your kids are slightly older. Like I tell you now, one of my, my daughter's, one of my daughter's favorite songs when she's in the car with me and she gets the phone, she can pick why she likes Will I Am and Britney. So that song oh, yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, she loves it. 
loves it. And I'm gonna, I get to come off here today, and I said, you know, I spoke with that guy, and she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went, he got to work with Will I Am, and she'd be like, wow. So for you, I'm hoping, you know, you're going to be able in a few years' time, or your kids might recognize it now, but in a few years' time, that's going to be one of those things that, you know, as, as a keepsake, as a this is what I've done in my life. Not only have I helped so many individuals, but a little thing for me, just a little thing for me, is that I got to spend a little bit of time with Will I Am. And, uh, I imagine that was, I imagine that was just even me just thinking about it. I imagine it was amazing. It, it, it was, it was, it's, it's one of those ticklish things because as much as I'm, you know, I'm helping students and, uh, you know, I should have the validation from the views and, and the comments. There's always, there was always that little musical validation. It's like, ah, oh, it's what I'm doing with a, with a professional, with an actual proper musician hear this and think more than, oh, well, at least it's helping kids, but yeah, musically, oh, it's all over the place. You know, so if I can get a musician, a proper musician to go, no, yes, he's helping the kids, but actually, musically, this is actually pretty good as well. And that, you know, that's what I came out of it, and that's what I wanted, so I was happy. Any, so uh, here's the one thing, any, uh, going to get Will I Am onto any collaborations with you, teaching some science? We're going to keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> yes amazing oh that would be amazing amazing um okay let's take it up because for all the positives for all the love and the support as any good content creator knows sometimes you just can't please everybody can you uh, i mean how'd you, how'd you how do you deal with that? Now you're a seasoned professional in it, but you know, there's people out there that might be listening to this who are you know want to get into these types of things. How do you deal with the negative parts? Gosh, um, I have a sort of a warped and sick mentality to the negative parts, um, and this is what I tell anyone that will listen. Which is, if if you if you're serious at it, and um, and you want it to go places, you have to get it. Otherwise, you haven't done anything. Hmm. So if you if you don't really want it, then be happy with the ten views you're not going to get any hate with 10 views. But if you're getting 10K views, you're probably going to get a comment or two. If you're getting 100,000 or a million views, you're going to get more than that. All those comments mean is that it's working. And in all fairness to the people viewing, no one wants our faces forced in front of your eyes when they're scrolling, especially if it's not the content they're looking for. Your face has just been pushed in front of them, so they might get irritated. So <laughs> fair enough. And if they're irritated, they've had a hard day some nonsense is going to spout out and most of the time people don't mean it sometimes I every now and again when I'm bored I might just comment back <laughs> to something that's something very reasonable and sometimes I'm shocked more often than not people come back with yeah sorry um, it doesn't always happen but um, usually I ignore it but sometimes I think actually I remember early days someone would be like oh this is rubbish and I, I trolled them back I looked at their account and I saw they took pictures of cats and I was like thanks for your feedback <laughs> I think your cat photography is wonderful, by the way. And, and then they came back and they're like, touche, I'm sorry. <laughs> there is that, isn't it? There's that phrase, kill them with kindness. Um, yeah. And I think you've just, you just epitomized that a little bit, haven't you? Because that's all they want sometimes, that, that, that reaction. And people aren't necessarily accustomed to that, when you speak, especially with students. There's a lot of students, aren't there, that, that when you speak to them, it's like, oh, I want to be, be an influencer, I want to do social media. And they see the outcome but you and I, you probably more so than me, but we know that the hard work and the hours that goes into it, like you said, 15 hours for one video, yes. like yeah. that's a monumental amount of time and effort to put into something. And if you're only doing it because you want the likes, if you're only doing it because you want the views, you're not going to last that, are you? It's the, yeah. the reasoning behind it has to be the right reasons, doesn't it? That's absolutely it. And every time I put out a video, there's like, I'm sure every creator does this, says the same thing, so I'm not unique in this. But um, it's always got to be something I'm I'm proud of. So my rep for this week is made. I, 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 sure I made it before this just in case we go over. So it's made, it's all loaded in draft. And my thing is, am I proud of this? So if it gets 10 views, you know, I'll be upset if it gets 10 views, I can't lie. But if it, if, if it did get 10 views, do I still like it? If I look at it, am I still like this? This is this is a good video, and I've still got videos now. I look back from two years ago, and I thought maybe I'd cringe on them after time, but I don't. There's some videos I look back on, and I think, God, this this is some of my best work. You know, and you got like five thousand views, and videos I thought were slightly worse have got millions. And I've tried reposting them, and obviously they're just they're just not good because they, they don't blow. Usually, if something doesn't blow up first time, if you repost it five or six times, 
one of those times will, and that will tell you it was just bad luck the previous times. Um, but it's the seal of approval. If, if you're happy and proud of what you've made, then then at least you feel your time hasn't been wasted. And that's how I feel with everything that I make. Yeah, I think that is great advice for people out there listening who you know, maybe do want to get into that or for the next question in terms of the advice we can give to, to science teachers or other educators, if I might mind, you know, who want to get into or deliver something similar. Like I'm talking a lot about micro learning at the moment and we, I'm going to get onto that with you a little bit, but like what advice would you give like for other, other teachers that, you know, maybe want to get into this? So, you know, I don't know the geography teacher or the, the MFL teacher, what would be your advice for them and some tips that you might give if, if they wanted to kind of follow a similar path? Um, I've got the first bit of very simple generic advice, which is so true. It's got to be said. Number one is, if you have your idea and you know roughly what you want to do, just do it. Usually everyone's affected by the same things. All my friends going to think, family going to think, colleagues going to think, is it going to be embarrassing? That won't go away. That will just be how it is. But once you put it out, then how you that, that, that stress of that worry usually goes down to about 20% because no one cares. Not in a bad way, but just like mm. sometimes we, our own ego thinks that people care massively about what that people don't. It's just, They'll just see a video and go, oh, and then and then that will become part of what you do. And even if people don't particularly like it or they've got things to say, one of the huge benefits of that is it's the social media enterprise allows you to improve more rapidly than, I would say, other areas. So, I don't know, if you're a teacher and you want to progress up the ranks, as I, as I once did, it's quite difficult to find out what you're doing wrong to improve systematically quickly. So I could do X, Y, Z, and I don't get any feedback on it. I don't know whether that is, is helping. Whereas on the video, if, if a few comments say this is useful, I like this particular thing, you can stick with that thing and you can cut the other things out and keep improving and improving and improving. So you get a feedback cycle that can allow you to take those low views or low engagement and ramp it up based on what feedback you're getting, which I don't think you really get in, in other lines of work as quickly. That's why you get some people that are able to proliferate ridiculously on social media because they don't do anything else and they hone in all their hours on just improving one little thing, one little thing, one little thing. And then they go like that, like, you know, people like Mr. Beast and all sorts of people just honing in on what you can improve in. So let's say I wanted to, to, to dabble in some sort of mus musical literacy, as it were. Um, but I was like, you know what, I'm not, I'm not going to be very good at this. Uh, I don't want to do it. But I like the idea of utilizing TikTok or, or that type of a social media thing. I think there's value in micro learning, as it were. You know. Yeah. I saw you ask what should I, what, uh, that I tagged you in it. That's why, because as someone who's, you know, uh, this, 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 this idea of, and again, I'm going to try. I want to try and use this issue. That's why I'm asking you because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going right. I want to set up maybe a private TikTok account. I want to then be able to post, not a rapid, but I want to post videos. I want to be able to utilize, and this is mine, um, AI. So I want to be able to take the content and shorten it down with AI and just then probably talk it through to the students. It's like, if that's my thing, you know, do you, do you think, first of all, is that, do you think that's a good idea? And second of all, even if I'm not rapping, you know, is there any sort of key points or tips that you could give to me in terms of how long should it be? You know, how many different objectives should I try and put into to the video? You know, is there any advice you can give someone who just wants to do micro learning, but would just literally be this this talking part? Um, God, I've, got, I've got so much advice when it comes to, to getting TikTok to work. Sometimes it's about picking the thing that makes the most sense to say first. Um, when it comes to, to, to making TikTok videos, my thing is always... Essentially, what do you do in the foot? What do you show in the first 0.5 seconds that attracts your audience? So sometimes that's got to be a visual. And what happens in those first 0.5 seconds? Because sometimes people say it's one second or two seconds. I don't think it is. I swipe faster than in a second if there's something that I don't like. It's just the visual. If I just saw a pavement, you know, I'm going to swipe before a second's up. So it's what are you showing in that first 0.5 seconds um, that is going to attract the audience type that you're looking for? And then what is the hook going to be to grant, not permission, 
there's a word for this. Basically, what is going to what is going to sell them the next two seconds? So, you know, if I use the most basic thing possible, if I was on the roof of my house um, and it, it, it looked to me, I was on the edge. Probably most people would see that. I think they'd be a bit scared. Like, what's going to happen? That's the 0.5. So I've already bought you for the next two seconds um, because you're not going to scroll. You're, what's what's he going to do? If I turn to the camera and be like, I've been training for years for this, I'm going to jump off. I probably I've now bought your permission for the next five seconds. You're probably not going to scroll for five next five seconds because what you first saw is like what's happening. Then it's paid off into the next thing. And then now you know exactly what's going to happen. So you're going to wait there. And if I say, I'm just going to wait for that aeroplane to go so you can hear this, you'd probably wait for the full five seconds. But sometimes things can fall flat because either the very first visual, people swipe, or whatever the first visual is, it doesn't pay into the second one. So if I said, if you saw me, it looked like I was about to jump, and then I just got a book out and sat down, I'm going to read you a story before I do, oh, I don't have got time for this. It, it, didn't, pay, it didn't pay off. So it's a whole bunch of, what are you showing? And the raps that I've got are the most successful. And they pay into that. The camera zooms in. Is this a teacher? Oh my gosh, he's rapping. And and then the, the immediate words that are coming out of my mouth are hard fire versus it's got a rhythm, it's got a reason, and it explains. And it it says something and then leads into an explanation of something else. Um, some of the raps I've done that don't do well, I think they flow pretty good, but it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily set up the next part, um, which sometimes I find quite difficult when I'm trying to, musically make it sound good it's difficult to say words that that hook you in for the next part when i'm also trying to create rhythm and rhyme um but that's what i found out uh, one of my most successful raps ever was tim's eyes are blue but his folks are hazel and it's the it's an immediate visual here's a person he's got a name i'm about to tell a story and i'm a teacher so that's already shocking enough but this teacher rapping what's gonna happen with tim tim's eyes are, but his eyes are hazel so it's just like okay i'm in it what What's happening next? Is he adopted or is his mum unfaithful? And it's like, oh, that's Jada Pinkett Smith. So that's, <laughs> that's essentially, that's brought you in. You're probably in it for 10 seconds now. You're definitely going to stick around for the next yeah. 10 seconds. If the next 10 seconds are good, then you're going to stay for the whole thing. But it's the whole, did the first thing pull you in for the second thing? Did the second thing, did it, you know, was it the product that the first thing was? Did it, did it literally pay off what you thought it was going to be? And if it did, you'll stay for the next bit. And then it's about continuing after that. I remember seeing a TikTok video explaining this concept and I was like, that that makes a lot of sense. You can show the most wild thing, but if the thing that happens after that wild thing doesn't buy back into the thing that made you want to watch in the first place, you'll just scroll. Uh, see, I always thought that teachers would be like would get be better teachers if they knew how to let's say do a coaching a sport i thought that coaching sports would be great from my perspective rugby learn how to coach i'm working with kids from a different perspective we like i found that improves my teaching do you mm -hmm. think then from everything you've just explained it sounds almost like right flow and engagement we talk a lot about that in lessons don't we flow and engagement do you think teachers would actually benefit from understanding hooks and engagement levels and how to keep attention. Do you think like there's, there's room for that in teacher training maybe? God, that's a very good question. Um, that's a very good question. And I've got a very rubbish answer, um, which is perhaps. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the reason why yes. I say perhaps, <laughs> the reason why I say perhaps is there are long form things, e.g. movies or lessons mm -hmm. where you're the person's in it regardless now of course you know you could come to one of my lessons alex and be like oh he's this rapping teacher guy it's probably going to be quite good and maybe i haven't prepared it and you're like wow this is so dull if i hadn't prepared it it would be dull um yeah. and nothing's going to change that you're stuck in for the hour and if i did have things if i spent hours preparing it it is going to be full of things that are something high energy to get your attention then you do something then we come back and explain it. Then you're back. It's going to, so it's going to follow a rhythm of that. And yes, I suppose it would, um, uh, subconsciously, I would be doing things that follow similar, similar hooks to what a TikTok is. Um, but yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know whether it's that easy. I mean, one thing I got quite good at from starting my company was sales. Um, and I found those techniques in sales ended up leaking into the lesson quite in terms of high energy and saying certain words and saying things in a certain way to get kids' attention when it could be a lull point. Um, yeah. 
But yeah, I, yeah, I guess it's like, so. It's just the difference with the TikTok is it's 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 a, a ten to thirty second video, whereas you've got a class for an hour. Um, and if you didn't know me and I created a bad impression uh, and it was just Matt's dull, boring, and unprepared, if I just suddenly snapped back into the map, my, the normal map, but if you've already seen me like that, it's not going to make much difference at that point. That's that's why I'm saying my answer was a bit wishy washy, perhaps. No, it's, it's, it's a good talking point, though. Yeah, I think it's a, that's what we want. We want these talking points about because we're educators. We're thinking about teacher training and what what new avenues and pathways will allow us to for the generation of kids that we're going to have in front of us that are not the same as what they were 10, 15 years ago, not the same yeah. as what they were even five years ago, post pandemic. It's like, what do we need? What skill sets do we as educators need that could add value and engagement? And I found even from longer form content of, of doing, you know, trying to create YouTube videos that aren't just always, you know, sit and talk and take you through it. But the storytelling type of thing, I love, I love yeah. Casey Neistat, you know, in terms of YouTube and how he does things. And there's some, now there's people on TikTok who do slightly longer form, like 90 seconds, two minute videos, um, are these different change of angles are very similar to his, but keep you engaged as they move from angle to angle, but create a story throughout their content. And, and Casey for me does that better than anyone else <laughs> as he kind of just moves through New York. And if you kind of just sat and told you, it'd be like, uh, but the, the, the change in scenery and the change of pace and, and you know, the shots, I think that for me, I've tried, I'm really starting to think about how could my lessons become stories and that, you know, there is a, there's characters or there's themes or there's journeys and, and, and the, the content in the lessons can, can kind of traverse that way. So there's an output, there's a, and the kids become then, they buy into it. It's because mm -hmm. it's like science from a science perspective. We often, I don't know if you probably had this as well. The kids go, when am I ever going to use this in the real world? Yes. And so yes. like I've tried to incorporate more real world examples. Like I'm teaching genetics to year 10 and it's dead easy to do. And you know me, I like AI. So having the two combined together makes it really easy. But just those conversations about what needs to now go into teacher training for the current student, for the cohort we are going to have, not currently have, but are going to have in the future, this idea of can you weave a story, you know, through the topic of mitosis? Can you give students characters that they can you know, engage with, that they can relate to, that they can buy into, so that they are the part and parcel of the lesson. I think it, it could, I'm just throwing it out there, but it's something that for me could be a fascinating part of teacher training is if, you know, they, they learn those types of skills and short form engagement for a two second, two minute task to a, you know, how do I keep kids engaged for 10 minutes uh, and, and all over the world, it would be different, but Something to think about, something for, you know, another day and, and bigger brains to, to try and uh, try and tackle with it. <laughs> but it <laughs> but, um, is definitely, just, right, it's, it's a talking point for sure. Um, yeah, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Um, all right, so I've only got two more questions really just to finish this up and, you know, you're a busy man. I appreciate your time with this. So from a, from a musical perspective, I'm really interested in terms of artists uh, and types of songs that really influence you. So for me, I think the, big, the best artist of all time um, has got to be Tupac. So Tupac was my number one growing up. Um, and living at the time, um, I said, and he's still alive now, 50 Cent, massive 50 Cent fan. Um, that's why I think I'll probably DM in more times than I'd like to admit. Have you ever seen, uh, <laughs> uh, have you ever seen <laughs> where, back when Marvel was, was, you know, proper good and they had, um, what was it, Spider-Man, no, Spider-Man Homecoming. <laughs> And you see oh, a message. Yeah, yeah. You just got all those messages and no replies. <laughs> that's like, that's like <laughs> me right now. That's one of my absolute favorite music artists. And I'm like, should I, should I keep doing this? And like, what if, they ever, what if I ever actually got big and then they, <laughs> they could showcase this fact? This guy doesn't give up. Right. Um, but yeah, 50 Cent, I'm a big fan of. Do it. Uh, do it, do and, it. Yeah, UK be artists. Oh, I would love it. I would love it. But UK artists, Stormzy, um, Dave, um, AJ Tracy, you know, I'm big fans of these guys. Um, and I think a few of them actually recently, have, I've, I've recently, finally, they've liked my stuff. I've seen they've liked and, uh, and followed. So I was over the moon, I think about a weekend ago, when I had Tiny Temper, Wretch, and, um, and AJ Tracy engage with, with some of my, my raps. I can believe it. I was like, yes. That would be amazing. You should... Uh... Like one, it, it, I imagine you kind of like, I wouldn't just DM him. Do you want to, do you want to come and record? Do you want to come in? Like I could, I can see it like a bit of a, do you know, you know, Connor, you must've seen come across Connor Price. 
I know his name. So I'm Connor Price. To- so Connor Price on TikTok or in the social media forms, he's the guy who kind of has the different different characters. So there's always a guy that walks through the door and then there's like the producer sat there, like I am now on my desk pressing buttons. And he does that one with like the global spin. So he'll land on a country and he'll DM an artist from that country and they kind of collaborate and stuff. But yeah, he's like blown up across TikTok and and then he's um, on Spotify streaming stuff. But he's very okay. much like that in terms of just that. I can imagine I can imagine you just trying to like go, oh, I've got this song and just collaborate with, you know, I'd love to see 50 Cent rapping across some, uh, oh. I was going to say the, 50 Cent doing the menstrual cycle would be amazing. <laughs> I'm sorry to throw it out there. <laughs> I, I don't think it's maybe that specific idea, but the general idea. I don't think it's it's completely impossible. Um, so I'm I'm pushing. I'm continuing to push and see what what can, what can be done. That would be that would be absolutely absolutely amazing. Because the final question really was for you. You know, twenty. We're just into 2024. Um, what are your aims and aspirations for Matt Green, the science rapper? You know, the businessman. What do you want to achieve from this year? So this year um, is to continue growing, growing the reach um, and seeing how many students we can really help with science. Um, and a TV show is something we're, we're keenly, keenly seeking um, and working towards, which might happen. Um, and, a, and a book or set of books um, either this year or early next year. So those are the, the, some of the key things on the horizon that we're working on now. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's just, you know, continuing these raps, working with very interesting brands. Every week seems to bring its own interesting thing. It's not just the rapping and the brand work. I'm doing consultation work here and there. I'm doing um, things like the New Year's Day parade performances, working with schools. Um, and I love it. I like doing my normal stuff and I like doing weird, wonderful new things, stretching myself. So yeah, just to continue doing that really. And maybe maybe a trip out to the Middle East anytime soon? Uh, you know what? I hope so. I've reached out to a few schools, you know, both in the Middle East and uh, and uh, and and the states. So that that is stuff. Well, I should have mentioned that. Yes, it's to it's to come out to schools, particularly in the Middle East, um, Dubai, the states, to do live performance because I've got a, I've got a science show, um, and all the times we've done it, it's done really well, and we're, we're always tweaking it to get it better. So, yeah. Watch this space. Watch this space. Yeah. I, I can't say I've got any like magic magic dust to sprinkle here in Dubai, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, you know, um, but uh, if I can be of any help or anything, we'll talk. We'll talk about it. But for today, Matt, thank you ever so much for coming and sharing the wisdom and talking with us and just being just a great guest. It's been a pleasure as always to speak with you. Um, thank yes, you ever so thanks much. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Been a pleasure. Thanks, Alex.